Praise be to God. Are you excited? What day is it today? It's day 365, but you're right. It's Wednesday the 31st of December. Tonight, this evening, I want us to reflect. Young ones, I want you to think about in this year. Over the course of these 365 days, what has the Lord done for you? I'm going to read a little passage, and I want us to think about it. There are a few words from a very wise man, very wise man, and they call him a preacher. His name's also Solomon. We have a lot to learn, and in this period, as we reflect upon the year that has been, some of you, like, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but some of you might have had year, uh, a time that would have been probably very difficult, maybe a time of trial. Others perhaps would have had a time that was uh, quite a very good year, a blessed year we may say, where the Lord really uh, strengthened and encouraged. But more importantly is for us to understand, as we reflect upon this year that has taken place, to look back and say, Lord, the things that we have maybe desired, the things that we have wanted, the things that we have gone for, are they in accord or in, you know, your will for us to do so? Or are we just doing this because we want to? Now, like I said, I'm talking about the author of Ecclesiastes. Now, he was a very, very, very wealthy man. He had everything. Some of you young lads right at the back, you want a Ferrari. Top of the range, nice, red, shiny little Ferrari, maybe, let's just say. He probably had about 50 of them, if he wanted to, let's just say, compared. Other people want a nice, big house, yeah? Maybe three-story, four-story. Looks like nothing compared to the palace that he had. This man had everything that he wanted, absolutely everything that he wanted. Whatever you can think in your mind... He basically, he owned it. Now, sometimes we daydream and we think, what would it be like maybe to win lotto? Now, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. But maybe some of you do daydream. And you think, what would we do with that kind of money? Well, let's not daydream. And let's not go there. However, this man had more than that. He had everything. And his advice to us, he begins and he says, everything is in vain. Huh? What do you mean? Everything is in vain. Everything. Everything to be in vain. What do you mean? To have that house, to have that car, to have all the... It, it is in vain. Yes. He had everything that we couldn't even, even imagine. Absolutely everything this man possessed. And yet, he says that it's pointless. It was, it was, he didn't make him happy. And many times we need to understand, what are the things that make us happy? Maybe we have, in this year that has gone by, focused on things that we thought make us happy. But in actual fact, have brought us sorrow, have brought us sadness. And that is why it's good for us to reflect. And in chapter 12, I'm only going to read these two little verses. Verses 13 and 14. Now, this is quite ironic because this is an introduction, but it sounds like a conclusion. The conclusion, when all this has been heard in, in context to the whole book of the previous um, you know, 12 chapters, he says, when all this has been heard, basically this is it's summed up. right? Fear God. Keep his commandments because this applies to every person. In other words, we all need to do this. For God will bring every act to judgment. Everything which is hidden and um, everything that is hidden which is good or evil. God is going to hold us accountable. 
We have consumed, we have taken 365 days out of this year, out of which we cannot go, hey, let's go back to January 1st this year. We cannot. It's gone. And it's very important, the Bible says, to make the most of every opportunity, to seize the moment, to grab hold of, of an opportunity. And in this year, if we have perhaps, let's just say we've wasted parts of the year, or we have not taken opportunities this year, let us reflect and think back and say, Lord, in 2015, we want to be more purposeful. Amen? In 2015, we want to have more passion for God. In 2015, we want to better count our days. So when we come down to 2015 in the same time as we are now, we can say, we serve the Lord with gladness. We did more for the Lord. Amen? Amen. Like I was saying, this man of God says everything is in vain. I hope and I pray that the things that we do are not in vain. Honestly. I would not want to live a whole life. Now you imagine this, young person and those at the back, to live a whole life. Faithful, so we say faithful to God, and in the end, for God not to take us into heaven because we have not obeyed God, because we have not done the things that God has asked us for. But instead, we want God to say, well done, good and faithful servant, come into the kingdom. These are the words that we yearn for. These are the words that we want God to say to us. Amen? How many of you want these words to be said to you? I want them, and I want them for my children and my wife and my family and for the church. And I pray that we all can hear these words. As the song was sang, in that day when we stand before to see the new Jerusalem, a new heaven and a new earth, what a day that's going to be. And I don't know whether we're taking it seriously or whether we're looking at our future and saying, Lord, one day we're going to be with you. And so many times we get lost in this world that's, that, you know, we focus in on our own problems and our own trials and, and, and our, it's our world. And God's saying, I'm bigger than that. Put your faith, put your hope, put your faith in me. This man of God, this preacher says everything is in vain. And like I said, I hope that nothing that we have done is in vain. And I hope that we can account and say, Lord, we've done things to make you happy. We wanted to praise your name. We've wanted to glorify you. We've done, we've given our all, or we've given you the best that we can during these 365 days. And I hope we do not say this, that all is in vain. All is in vain. At the beginning of chapter 12, he says, remember, remember also your creator in the days of your youth. And I want to touch on this. Remember your creator. Young people, children, remember God as your creator. Remember God. Instill it into your mind. Understand this. And when we do so, we think there's a few things that are attached to this. You are reminded of the origin. You were created by God. You were created purposefully, not a mistake, you are purposely created by God. You are the image of God. Amen? We are the image of God and the glory of God that is shown out to the world to show the light to those that are around us. And it is very important that we understand this, that He is our creator. But more so importantly than this, to understand that God is a creator and he created everything, yeah? He created this world and every beautiful thing that, you know, that we see. You know, we see the ocean, the beautiful sunset and the trees and the nature that is before us. It is amazing. God created everything. But more than knowing that God is creator, more importantly is to know that this creator has a relationship with you. More importantly is to know that you have a relationship with this creator. That you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because as we come into 2015, we need to be prepared. We need to have a plan in place. Because if we don't have a plan, if we don't have a scope, if we're not aiming for something, I'll tell you what, you aim for nothing and you'll get it. If you aim for nothing, you'll get it. 
That is what is important for us as children of God to aim and say in this year, Lord, help us to be fruitful. Lord, help us to do more for you. Lord, help us to read your word more. Help us to study your word more. Help us to be more attent to what you're asking us in the word of God. All these sorts of things we need to understand. And if we haven't started a relationship with the Lord, maybe it's time to, let's, as, the, as the saying is, turn a fresh page. Come 2015, it's a new year, right? We hit the reset button, okay? And we start at zero, day zero. Tomorrow's going to be day zero, okay? Or day one, I should say. We, we hit the reset button. Let us start by giving God the best that you have. Let us start by remembering God is your creator. He's the one that loves you. He's the one that paid with his life so that we can have fellowship today. And so many times, we take it for granted. We take it for granted. That's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. Yeah, it is the way. But sometimes we just need to acknowledge it and understand that God wants to have fellowship with us. The creator of this universe wants to spend time with you. Did you know that? Did you know that? God wants to spend time with you. You may think I'm little. What does God care? Oh, he cares so much. He cares so much for every single person. You wouldn't even have an idea. In fact, he makes, he makes Santa look pretty bad. That's how much he cares. And Santa's not even real. But God is. God is real. He is as real as you and me. As you're looking at me and I'm looking at you, that's how, that's how real God is. But sometimes we just can't see that. And the word of God says we need to come before God in faith. Yeah? In faith, believing and trusting, put ourselves in God. Like I said, this man of God says everything is in vain. In chapter 12, he says, remember also your creator. Young, little boy, little girl, youth, remember your creator. Have him in your mind. When you remember, right, it means that you must have been taught somewhere, yeah? It doesn't just pop in overnight. So if, as us as parents, let us teach our children. And obviously, we're making an effort even with the church and the Sunday school and with a youth group. We want to teach the word of God so that remembrance takes place in their minds. Amen. So that they can remember who their creator and their God is to have a relationship. Because that is why we are here. We are here because we are connected through the Holy Spirit, through what has Jesus has done. This is what brings us together. If it wasn't for that, you know what? There would be no point for us to be here. But there is a point, a very special and important point, to trust God and to have a relationship with him. Let us start 2015 desiring more of God. Now, someone once said, how do you, how do you desire more of God? A person once asked his teacher, and the disciple said, Look, I'm really interested. I, I want to know how do I desire God very much. And the teacher said, okay, bring to me a big bucket of water. Yeah? Big bucket, fill it with water, bring it to me. And this disciple quickly runs. He fills the, the bucket of water and he comes back. And the master says, look into that big bucket of water. Have a look. And the disciple's sitting there, and he's looking straight into the, into the big, you know, bucket of water. The master gets his head, puts his head in the water, and he holds his head there for a few seconds. And then he pulls his head out quickly. He's not going to drown him. Don't do that at home, kids, okay? And he says, that's how I want you to see God, like he's your every breath, until... You know, you need him so much that you can't breathe. To be so dependent upon God, to desire God so much until you can't do without him. That's how we should desire God. But sometimes we just get maybe too busy with doing certain things that we forget to search for God. We forget to fall in love with God, to desire God again because we're too busy doing church. Yeah, 
We're too busy doing certain things and God's saying, come back to the basics. Spend time with me. Talk to me. Communicate. Pray. Yeah? That's what prayer is. Prayer is, it's like how I'm talking to you. Well, well, it's only one way street at the moment. And it's a return. When you talk to your friends, what happens? Yeah? Both people talk. That is exactly what happens in prayer. We talk and God talks. The problem is, when we come to God, we come to God like this. Lord, thank you for everything that you've given us. Give us dot, 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 dot. Amen. See you later. How many of us, in a friendship that we have, let's just say with our spouse, husbands or wives, come to them and say, Dear Simona, I want you to do this, 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 this. See you later. What kind of a relationship is that? It's not a relationship, right? God wants more from us. He doesn't want us just to say our little prayer and then say, adios. He wants us to spend time to listen to what God is challenging us to do. That is why I'm very important. God, our creator, and the Lord Jesus wants to spend time with us every single day. Not just at Christmas, right? Not just when we're in church. Every single day is important to spend time with God. And I pray and I hope every one of us can do that. Because when we do that, you know what happens? We remember our Creator. We remember our Creator and we think about the good things that He has done for us. And we think about how wonderful He is and how awesome He is and how wonderful things He's, he's given us. And after we do that, a few verses before chapter 12, it says, Rejoice, young man. Oh, woman, rejoice. Be happy. Be happy. And I want to tell you that in this world, there is a lot of problems, yeah? There is a lot of hardship. There's a lot of difficulty. There is a lot of hard things. However, let us rejoice. Let us be happy, yeah? Let us be happy in our in, in church. Let us be happy in our homes. Let us be happy wherever we go because you know what the word of God says? It says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's what it says in Nehemiah. The joy of God, the joy of the relationship that you have with God is your strength because it powers you up and you go again day after day and you get charged up like a battery. We get charged up. Let this joy of God fill our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen? And let us be joyful. Let us rejoice. As we reflect upon perhaps this year, we've had maybe hardship, good times and bad. But let us say in this next year, Lord, we want to know you more. We want to know you more as our creator, as our God. We want to spend time with you. We want to rejoice. We want to rejoice in the Lord because God has made us free. He set you free. And he's given us a life. And he hasn't given us a life that, you know, God's not stingy, okay? God is not stingy. He gives with arms wide open, okay? He gives, okay? We need to understand that. God is a giving God, a loving God who wants to have fellowship. But we must rejoice. We must be happy. We must be happy. And I've shared this before, but I say, so many times when life throws you a lemon... When life throws you a lemon, you know what you do? You squeeze a lemon, you add some sugar, and you make some lemonade. Understand to see the good in the bad. Understand to see the God in the difficult. Understand to see that behind everything that we go through in life is a powerful God who is behind us. If God is for us, who can be against you? Young children, if God is with you by your side every single day, even when you go to sleep, he protects you. If God is for you, who can be against you? No one. That's what the answer is. No one can be against us because our God is so powerful. Our God is so mighty. He's awesome. And he loves us every single day, day after day. The Bible says his goodness is given again. Day after day, his goodness is poured upon us. The fourth thing, fear God. The preacher here, Solomon, he says, fear God. Now, fear God doesn't mean to tremble and to 
you know, to, to be absolutely terrified, okay, as, it, as of, let's just say, a criminal or something. It's with context to have respect, to honor God, yeah, to honor God, to be careful, to understand that God is watching at all times, yeah? God is watching at all times. And sometimes I even share this with the youth and I say, young people, would you act the way you do if our pastor, Brother Dumitru Popa, would be next to you, side by side? Would you act like this? And they give me a funny look. The answer is obviously no. And I say to them, however, think of God. Think of our God, who is there. But the Dumitru Papa can't be in every single place. Yeah? But our God is watching in every single place. And the Bible says that we will be rewarded accordingly or we will be judged upon the things that we do. And it is very important to understand this, this principle. So we need to fear God, respect and love Him and understand that He is God that is watching over all of us. Now He's not watching over all of us so that as soon as we do something wrong, he gives us a big whack. No, he's watching over us to protect us, to guide us, to help us, to nurture us, to lead us on the path of righteousness. Because you know what? He doesn't want any of you, anyone, to fall away and to end up in hell. No, no, he doesn't want absolutely anyone, the Bible says. He wants every single person here tonight to be in heaven. Amen? Every single person, from the youngest to the eldest, from the front to the back, every single person. And that's his desire, that is his burning desire to have, and that's why he wants to spend this time with you. Otherwise, what's the point? But the point is God loves. God loves you so much, very much. And it's, you know, sometimes we may sound like a broken record saying it, but God loves us. God loves us, and he's shown us time and time again. The fifth principle, and this is what I'm going to finish with, after we've learned to fear God, and obviously we're happy in the Lord, we're rejoicing, is keep His commandments. Obey. Obey God. Obey God. And I just want to add something in here. In the Old Testament, it says obey the commandments. Yeah? Obey God. In the New Testament, it's a little bit different. We need to love God. There is a difference because I can read the word and the word says, do not do this. But me and my flesh, perhaps I say, okay, I don't want to do this, but I've got to do it for the, for the Lord. But I've got to do it. I've got to go to you know, do this and I've got to do that. And we do it out of a sense of duty. Yeah, we do it because we have to do it. We don't do it because we want to do it, yeah? Like when your mum and dad says, take out the garbage, what do you say? Sure, let's do it straight away. Uh, it's the last thing, isn't it? But me, can't you just tell my sister? Can't you tell my brother to do it? There's plenty of them to do it. That's the difference. That is the difference in short term. So many times, yeah, so many times, we misunderstand this truth. And God wants to understand, he wants us to understand that there is a difference between our obedience and our love. In the New Testament, we are taught to, to do it out of a, a sense of love because we love God, yeah? We don't do it because we have to do it. We do it because we want to do it because God has died for us. He's given us a hope. He's given us a reason and we want to do it. We want to sing for God. We want to come to church. We want to pray. We want to read our Bibles. And sometimes it may take a bit of a kickstart. But I'll tell you what, you know the good old Romanian saying? You've got to start somewhere, right? Start in the Word of God. Start doing things for the Lord. And you'll see that it will come to you. And you'll praise God and you will honor God with, with the way that you're doing. But in this verse it says, keep His commandments. Obey God. Listen to God. Listen to God. The Word of God, so many times, is very simple. But you know what we do? We make it complicated. Fear God. Obey God. Love God. Revere Him. Respect Him. Love Him. That's all we need to do. And this last part says, 
because who needs to listen to all these words? Who needs to fulfill this? Fear and obey God. Who needs to do it? Who? Who, who needs to do it? Is it the pastors? Is it the leaders? All of us. Amen. Amen. We all need to do this. Yeah? We all need to understand the fear of God. We all need to understand that He loves us and He wants us to keep His commandments, not out of sense of duty, but because we love Him. In 2015, let us ch change our gears a little bit. Now, I know probably some of you don't drive because you're a little bit young. But let's kick it up a notch. Let's praise God a little bit more. Let's give God more of our time. Let's do more for the Lord. Let's fear God in the way that it's meant. Honor Him, respect Him, love Him, and obey His commandments. Because this is the duty of every single person here. There is no one person that is excluded. We are all included in this little clause. We need to obey and love God. And I pray that in 2015, the Lord will bless you. I pray in 2015, the Lord will bless your families, will increase your families, will give you prosperity, both spiritual and material, in accord with God's will. I thank God that he has protected you and protected us up until this point. And we say, Lord, continue with your protection of your church in 2015. Lord, inspire your church in 2015. Give us guidance in 2015. Put a vision in our heart in 2015. And help us to love you more and more and more in 2015. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you.